Hello everybody, uh, this is Virtual Class for October 27th. Today we're going to be talking uh, about a few different things. We read the Martin Luther King uh, letter from the Birmingham jail and uh, the piece, uh, the speech, the civil rights speech from, from John F. Kennedy. I thought um, probably what would be best would be to talk about some uh, rhetorical appeals. In other words, how um, these writers might be making their appeals to their audiences and trying to get things done with language. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, Aristotle. Why not? Never a bad idea to talk about Aristotle, right? So, um, so what I thought we would do, we're putting these in the context of the unit on race, class, and gender, and um, the speeches that we're dealing with, one, well, one speech from, from John F. Kennedy, and the piece, the letter from the Birmingham jail, which Martin Luther King actually wrote um, in, uh, I believe it was 1963, um, and published in newspapers. You'll, you'll need to do a little bit of research to figure out um, how he wrote that and, and what he was doing uh, with it. But, um, but I thought what we would do is, is discuss three different kinds of appeals that you get in Rhetoric. Now, rhetoric is the kind of classical art of persuasion, if you will. Um, there are different definitions for it. I won't go into all of them. But, uh, but rhetoric, in short, is kind of the old uh, art of public speaking. Um, and we also use it for the, the art of good writing these days. So within Aristotle's rhetoric, Aristotle was writing this 2,400-something years ago. Um, he came up with what he referred to as the three appeals the three ways that we appeal to people when we when we speak. Now um, these three appeals are kind of endless in variation and they always relate to each other. There's never one pure appeal or another. Was, they always kind of come together um, at the same time but they are rhetorical tendencies if you will. So, so we tend to appeal um, in one way more than another at certain times. So for example you know, I might try, you know, my, my children, for example, would, would, they very often use what's what I would call an emotional appeal, right, where they, they try to tug on my heartstrings to get something that I want. Um, but there are other kinds of appeals that Aristotle talks about. There's the emotional appeal, and then there's the, um, the appeal to trust. Um, how do I get you to trust me? Um, and then there's the logical appeal, which is using good reasoning to, um, to, to get through to you and to appeal to you. So, so we're going to break those down one at a time and, um, and talk about each one a little bit. And, and then you're going to go in and you're going to look at, um, mostly you're going to look at Martin Luther King's letter from the Birmingham jail and discuss um, on the test uh, that you have to take to, uh, to replace today's class. Um, I'm calling it a test. It's, that's what they call it on Blackboard. So um, you're going to go in and answer some questions about these different kinds of appeals. So let's talk about those three appeals real shortly. Um, so there are three kinds of appeals, okay, uh, according to Aristotle. The first appeal um, is, is the appeal to emotion, what he calls pathos in Greek, P-A-T-H-O-S. Um, an appeal to pathos is an appeal to the emotions of the audience. It's an attempt to, um, to kind of get them feeling a particular way. And um, to appeal to them through the emotions is to use their own feelings um, kind of to your advantage, if you will, to, to, to actually get them feeling a particular way, to motivate a particular kind of change in the world. Um, so that would be pathos, an appeal to emotion. Um, the second kind is, is referred to in Greek as ethos, okay? It's the root of our word ethical, and, um, and it is an appeal to trust, so trying to get someone to trust you, um, and trying to, um, once they get, once you've earned their trust, um, doing something with that trust to kind of affect a particular, again, a, a particular kind of change in the world. Uh, the third kind, in Greek is called logos, which is the root of our word logic, and is an appeal to reason, so trying to reason your way through something and appealing to somebody else's sense of reason. So those three kinds form a kind of equilateral triangle, if you will, 
um, where you have logos, ethos, and pathos, none of the three are, are preferred uh, necessarily. They're all three active at all times. Anytime you're speaking, you could find logic. Anytime you're speaking, you could find emotion. Anytime you're speaking, you could find trust. Um, but, um, but we can turn our attention towards one more than the other at, at, at certain times. So, um, so you know, when you know when I walk into the classroom, and um, and I, you know, I I tell you a story about uh, I don't know, when I was a kid, and I'm trying to get you to feel a certain way so that you understand the readings a little bit better. That would be more of an appeal to the emotions. You know, if I'm, you know, if I tell you a, a sad story that I heard or something to put you in a particular frame of mind. Uh, to get you to appreciate something in a different way based on how it feels. Um, that would be an appeal to the emotions. Um, you know, if I, uh, you know, there are issues of, of ethos and trust at work all the time in the classroom too. So, um, you know, the fact that I'm, you know, Dr. Sean Connery, you're, you're going to take that in a particular way. Um, you're going to trust me probably because of the credentials that I have, the fact that the university has put me in this classroom um, and that they trust me. Um, the fact that you paid for the class is going to change the way that you trust me. All of those things are part of, of the rhetorical situation that we're in. But if I appeal to you and I say something like, you know, well, you can trust me because I have a PhD or, you know, um, you know, like a con artist tries to, to con you into to, to you know, confiding in them, um, and that's a kind of uh, appeal to ethos. Um, but it's also, you know, um, it's also it's not always manipulative. Most of the time, it's not. It's it's just you know, you can trust me because you trust me. Um, and there's a million different ways that I can get you to trust me. And if I try to do that, I'm appealing to ethos. Um, last is um, an appeal to logic, and um, you know, certainly not least is the logic. Um, and logic itself, um, logos tends to be uh, concerned with two things. It's 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 words about words. So things like definitions. You know, when you see someone kind of splitting hairs on a definition, they lay it out and they say, "This is what it means." Um, but also um, an appeal to to facts, right? So like we observed this, we saw it happen, um, and we know that to be the case. And here's the fact. Um, so those kinds of appeals are, are always grounded in, in logic. So when somebody's walking you through a particular argument and they say, you know, I have three main points to make, this one, this one, and this one, um, they're, they're, they're trying to logically set up the, the stages of the argument. That's an appeal to, to logic. Um, again, the variations on this are, are, are so huge. Aristotle himself wrote, you know, books and books and books on, on logic. Um, and you can spend the rest of your life learning about logic um, if you're interested, but, but it's just one of the three appeals. I also think it's important to note that, that these three appeals, um, that they play into each other. For example, um, and this is where I think a lot of the critique for, for what you're trying to do here with this assignment today um, can come in, but you know, it's interesting to think about, for example, how logic can be used to build to appeal to someone's trust, you know, if if you're talking to a scientist, you know, you have to be very logical and methodical. You have to, you know, have to follow that scientific method to a T. You have to draw on your facts um, in order to get them to trust you. So, you know, so logos and ethos play in together. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, emotions used to get someone's trust. Um, you know, you 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 appeal to them. Uh, for compassion, or you 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 um, look to them and say, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm just as angry as you are, and um, and and so you know, in that way, emotion can be used to trust. You can you can um, you can look at how logic and emotion play together. You know, like the you know to to build an argument kind of reasonably off of off of how you're feeling. So. Um, so looking at how they interrelate, it's not just looking for one appeal or the other, like I said, they never exist in isolation, but actually looking at how they relate to each other and how they get implemented in a given argument is kind of where the critique of using these three appeals comes in. 
So, um, so to recap, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the speech and the letter from the Birmingham jail that we read for today, and we're going to think about these different kinds of appeals. You have on the one hand an appeal to emotions, like where is Martin Luther King um, trying to appeal to the emotions of the reader, right? And what is he trying to do by appealing to the reader through emotion? Next, um, you know, the parts where Martin Luther King is trying to gain a particular kind of trust with the reader. Um, why is he doing that? Why is he trying to build a particular kind of trust? Where, where in the text is he actually specifically looking to build that trust? And last um, is an appeal to, to reason. And, and Martin Luther King is a very well-educated, very reasonable guy, and you'll see that, that parts of the text are almost like philosophy. They're so, they're so methodically uh, logical. So, um, so the, that's an appeal to reason. So, so you want to go through the text, um, really think about it, find those parts that affect you most deeply, that are most interesting to you, um, or that are using these particular kinds of appeals. Um, and, um, and I want you to write comments based on uh, what you'll find on Blackboard um, about how you think that's working and, and, and why. And then, and then there's one question about, um, about synthesizing the differences between Martin Luther King's letter from the Birmingham jail and um, John F. Kennedy's civil rights speech. So what are the similarities and differences in what they're trying to say there? So. Um, so this is your replacement for class on, on Monday. You've got 24 hours to do it. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you guys when we get back on Wednesday. Okay, take care.